Hey everyone, uh, it's Gabby, and this is going to be a different podcast. Uh, something I actually wanted to do, but I haven't really had a chance to, so I asked for some questions and about stuff I'm working on, um, and Rupert was kind enough to send me some questions about Hunted, uh, things he wanted to know and stuff like that, and yeah, I'm pretty much taking any questions at all ever uh because hey it makes me think about these things and it makes me work on world building and it also makes me just fucking work on what i should be doing so yeah um first question is uh they say writers put parts of themselves in their work which two of your characters do you think resemble you the most and why uh quinn and grace I, I don't even need to think about that. Um, Grace was actually, uh, when I was physically designing her, it was more of a, uh, it was more of a, this is my, what I would ideally like to look like kind of thing. And I was just trying to draw that to get out dysphoria feelings and stuff like that. So it was actually, um... Yeah, yeah, she's literally a self-insert um, that I ended up basing an entire character around. So that was a thing. And Quinn, because she's very, very much my personality. Um, I also have agoraphobia. And I'm very nervous and get scared of a lot of things very easily and stuff. And get very emotional a lot. So she's... Yeah, those, those two by far. Um... Everyone is based on people I know in some way or another, but those two are definitely uh, the two that I took chunks of myself for. Uh, yeah, they're uh, they're definitely parts of me. Uh, the second question is, what is your inspiration for the post-flood apocalypse world? Actually, it came from an old RP that some very, very old former friends of mine were working on. Um, we started coming up with like a setting for it just because we didn't want to use anything current and we wanted to make it uh, something that none of us had really done before. And we came up with, uh, well, at first it was floating islands in the sky. like, And I, I don't know, I, I didn't quite like that. And uh, so I thought something that was a bit more realistic when I was working on Hunted was well, what if everything had flooded and sea levels had raised a couple hundred feet? And actually, no, I can't. I have it written down somewhere. I have like the exact how far sea levels would have raised or how what kind of land would have formed from certain sea levels, ra raises and stuff like that. I have written down exactly how high the sea level rose and hunted, but I can't for the life of me remember off the top of my head. I'll look through Evernote later. Um... But yeah, and at that time, I had come up with, uh, during, while we were making the RP stuff, I had actually come up with an idea for a, uh, for the original city ships, I guess. They were giant blimps that held, like, hundreds of people that all kind of lived and worked there and stuff. Uh, but yeah, that was all scrapped. No longer friends with any of the people from back then, so... And none of it really matters. And I took my ideas and formed the basis for uh, the current version of The Hunted. Um, and then, actually, Sky was the name of the story that that was going to take place in. Because I had a whole idea for Grace being a completely separate story from The Hunted. The Hunted was something completely different that was a lot more fantasy kind of medieval, or well, not medieval, but uh, like World War II, but with fantasy stuff added in, and like it was it was much different than it is right now. Um, and then I was working on them both at the same time, said fuck it, and just mashed them together and started writing, and that's that's what came out. And so, yeah, that's how I uh, that's how that came around. I, I don't really know, the flood thing was just kind of like hey, yeah, uh, so that's a thing flooding works because that's a actual thing that we may have to deal with in the next like thousand years or whatever third question is are there any working rail networks in the world and will we hear any locomotives in future chapters 
Um, I'm sure at some point I'll forget to edit out the damn train that's nearby. Uh, as for trains, they're not quite the most... Um, any Pretty much any land travel is very, very dangerous, and also not quite the easiest thing to do, because most things are either underwater, or things have changed so drastically that it would be very, very hard to get them to, like, even, even the cars that they use around town for, uh, for the Keys Cruise town, they, they are very, very limited in the range they can go. Fuel is very hard to come by, uh, for just, like, old gasoline and stuff. It's just very hard to come by still. Um, people have spent a lot more time rebuilding the factories and everything that would refine jet fuel and stuff like that specifically because air travel is a lot safer and a lot easier than ground travel um and also they have a really hard time with like you know roving bands of raiders who will just as soon as blow the fuck out of something that they know is going to come by on a stationary track so yeah i mean it it's possible that somewhere in a place that is high enough that has trains that didn't get touched by too much flooding and stuff uh, it could possibly have some trains um, I don't know we'll see in the future but right now no plans for locomotives um, straight out but I mean it, it could happen I, I'm not gonna say no for good um so how do the runner vapor engines work? Best pseudoscience answer, please. Okay, I spent a lot of fucking time thinking about this. So, after the flooding, the world... It, the flooding was twofold. There was a lot of storms, and also just a lot of polar melting. So, sea levels rose, lots more storms happened, because there was more surface area for water, those storms ended up being kind of a permanent fixture on the planet because of a lot of other bullshit that happens, which will be explained later. Uh, I do not want to give away things. And as this was happening, of course, blah, 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 governments were working on ways to make these city ships stay up in the air. And there weren't really that many ways of doing it, I mean, there's no way to keep fuel that long. Like, they didn't know how long the, the planet was going to be flooded. They didn't know how long these things needed to stay in the air. So they worked on something new. Well, essentially, the vapor engines pull in water vapor and break it down to just hydrogen and oxygen. So instead of it being water, it becomes its base elements, which both burn very well. So if it can dip into clouds, it can get, like, fuel from that, essentially. Breaks it down, burns the two elements separately for propulsion and everything else. And it can store that because it's they're super efficient at doing it, and they're pretty much the only thing that allows the the airships like the Saki and uh, all of the city ships to stay afloat, as well as runners, because runners don't need much. They're fairly lightweight compared to how much their engines can put out, so they don't need that much in terms. They can go through a few clouds and last on that for a while. And since there's a lot of cloud cover, because most of the planet is covered in cloud cover, it's very easy to just fly through and stay aloft. Um, there are a couple other things that will... I don't want to give everything away because there is one part of them that's going to be a kind of key point later on. Uh, don't want to give that away, though. So that, that, that one piece will stay not told yet. Uh, are there any plans for any British characters or plot lines in the future? I am horrible at British accents, and I do not have enough friends who live in the UK to possibly do voices properly. Um, I know two people who directly live in the UK. 
That would be my friend Luca and Rupert. That's it, really. Uh, I do not have enough people who can do voices, so um, maybe sometime if I can. Yeah, uh, it would be. Uh, I don't know. It, 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 not not anytime soon. I'm gonna try to keep it centralized to the places I've been to and stuff like that. Um, there's a reason that they that they're they're going to specific towns and stuff like that and talk about specific places because these are places I know and I've lived in and I've been to and stuff and uh, I'm trying to keep things familiar with myself. I'm eventually going to branch out and I do have ideas for other places they're going to go to but right now, yeah, I uh, I kind of just want to keep it local until I figure out things more uh, and also find some people who could do the voices and also I need to be able to pay those people so that's the other thing. Like, uh, Getting voice actors is very hard. And Van and Eli were kind enough to, like, say yes when I asked them and to want to do it. But at the same time, I don't like not paying people who do stuff for me like that. Um, so, yeah, I I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll figure that out. But uh, as of right now, no. no. No plans on heading across the pond yet. Uh, there may be somebody who pops up at some point, but not just yet. Um, why did I decide to have Van and Eli help with the voice and their characters and stuff? I, I just, I got tired of doing it all on my own, and I thought having some extra people on it will help, uh, and who says they're going to be the only two who join in? Uh, I have some other people who have said yes to my asking, or offered, uh, so we'll see. Maybe in this next episode that is currently ready to be recorded, possibly. I don't know. I need to go do a final pass on the script. Um, characters running from their past seems a recurring theme. What are your feelings on that? Um, yeah, remember question one where you said writers put a lot of themselves into their writing? There's a reason I bounce around the country a lot, I guess. I don't know. Uh, that just seems to be a recurring theme of my life, so why not make it a recurring theme of my writing? Uh, and will we hear any more about the nameless rescuer who saved the girls from the Pats? Despite the fact that he is dead, I love how every character links to another in a different plotline. He seems the only loose end thus far. I... Uh, one correction, I don't think it was the Pats, and if I said it was the Pats, I fucked up. Um, there, there was something that happens between when they escape and when they get to, uh, when they get to the Saki that is going to be revealed later, uh, but I don't believe it was the Pats that they were held captive by. Anyway, um, we might hear more about him. Uh, there are plans for him. Yes, he is dead, but I, uh... Yeah. He, um... He could still play an important role in things, so... Yeah, uh, pretty much every character is tied to every character. Anytime a new character is introduced and has, like, more than a couple sentences whenever they're there... If they seem important, they are, in some way or another. Uh, there's a reason I didn't name him though, because that will be used later on, but yeah, uh, pretty much if I name a character, and if they have more than a couple lines here and there, they're definitely somebody who has some major uh, effect on something at some point. So yeah, uh, he'll definitely, he'll be back eventually. Not, not anytime soon. Probably not in this book. Um, but that's about all for now. Uh, that's all I got. Because I didn't really advertise I was doing this. So, uh, yeah, if you have any questions at all um, that you want me to answer about this or dead or any, any of the bullshit I do, uh, yeah, hit me up on Twitter at RecurringVs or send an ask on Tumblr, RecurringVs.tumblr.com or there'll be... I'll just put a sticky thread up at the top on the 
Spider Squid Productions subreddit, which is uh, reddit.com slash r slash spider squid. And you can just ask questions in there, and I will answer them pretty much whenever I have a batch of like 10 questions or something. I'll, uh, I'll just go answer whatever. Uh, outside of that, I will probably make a separate feed for this at some point, but right now this will probably get tossed into the, uh... Ah, well, shit. I don't know. Wouldn't really work in percentages, would it? I'll figure out where I'm gonna put it. Uh, anyway, yeah, uh, if you want to know more about the shit I'm talking about, uh, The Hunted is at, I believe, spiderscraperproductions.com slash sky-podcast, or just look for the playlist on youtube.com slash recurring these. Uh, if you want to see more of the bullshit that I do in general, spider script, spider, in the spider script productions.com or, uh, recurring these on YouTube, youtube.com slash recurring these. Uh, if you would like to support me and everybody else who does shit with me, um, then head on over to patreon.com slash SSP. Ch- just chip in a buck or two or whatever. I mean, like if you got, like five cents extra a month i don't care like if you like our shit and you want to support us head on over there uh outside of that yeah have a nice night everybody i'll see you whenever i do another one of these